Howdy folks, my name is Richie, aka Bogotter, back with another Q&A video. In the first Q&A video, I actually asked people to suggest names for this show or series. And after I put the video up, I kind of had second thoughts. I said, you know what, I should just keep it called The Bog Vlog and then say Q&A number one, Q&A number two. And it'd be boring, but at least it'd be easily recognizable title. And then Nick Barnett ruined those plans when he posted a comment suggesting, hey, you should call it Things You Ought or Know. And I'm just a sucker for horrible, corny humor, so that's the name of the show. So welcome to Things You Ought to Know 2. Well, actually, it's only the first time it's been called that. Well, you know what I mean. So what is this video? This video is a chance for my Patreon supporters to ask me questions. If you don't know what Patreon is, it is uh, there's a link to it in the description below. It's a website where people can help support content creators do the things that they love. So rather it be musicians or video producers like myself. Um, so I have people who pledge a certain amount of money to me every single month uh, in order to support my work. But in as a reward, I can offer different types of perks. One of those perks is people can ask me questions about anything. It could be gaming related, not gaming related. So these are the answers to those questions. Another uh, perk for those who are at the sea otter level or above, these generous individuals, is I will do a monthly shout out and tell them thank you publicly and help promote a website or a YouTube channel or something like that. So I'm happy to announce that I actually have two sea otters this month. Um, one of them is a returning sea otter and the other one's brand new. So I wanted to give a shout out to Falco, um, who has a YouTube channel called Top Hats and Champagne. And this is a gaming-related uh, YouTube channel that started up fairly recently, and he does some really unique videos. He he does videos, um, you know, sometimes he does a video where it's just game footage and he's talking about a topic that he's passionate about. But he also does um, skits and different kinds of scenes that he writes, and they're humorous in nature, and he does a lot of production into them. He, he has costumes, he does a gr cool green screen effect, he's got um, a whole bunch of special effects that go on on the screen, he's better video editor than I am. They usually are along the vein of PC gaming is the master race and he pokes a lot of fun at console gamers and mobile gamers and it's just a cool channel but he's got a, a very eclectic uh, mix of videos on there. He's got a, um, an interview with uh, Al Lowe who is of the Leisure Suit Larry uh, series fame so he has got dev interviews up there but my favorite video that he's done recently is the Ladies and Landscapes of Wildstar where he just takes this cool funky music and he he uh, takes shots in game of Wildstar characters walking around and dancing and doing things and he just perfectly times the movements to the music and I don't know it's very trippy but I, I don't know what it is about that video but I'm, I'm really enthralled by it so go over to his channel I'll put a link to the description below probably on the screen as well and go over there and subscribe to uh, Falco I'd really appreciate it my second shout out is a guy named Mark Thomas aka Workhorse who I met at PAX East and uh, he is the guild leader of a guild called uh, Die Trying. Now, this is a multi-game guild, but currently they are focused on Wildstar. This is an exile side guild. They're looking to do raiding and PvP. And uh, it's more of a casual, friendly, like they're serious about the game, but they realize people have you know real life... Um, responsibilities, families, and work, and different things like that, and they're not going to treat the game like a job, um, and they're very commu community uh, uh, focused. They will they will recruit the player and not the character, so if you're a good fit for the guild, it doesn't matter what class you're really playing, they want to get you in there, and they're also looking to uh, play EverQuest Next and um, uh, Star Citizen as well. So go over to www.die-trying.org. I'll put a link to the description below and go over and check out Mark's uh, guild. And I uh, just want to thank Mark and Falco very much for your support. And now here are things you ought to know. Okay, first up this week, we have a question from Falco. Actually, I have three questions from Falco. He sent three great questions in, so I'm going to actually answer all three of them. The first question says, in your latest vlog, you mentioned you finally considered your YouTube channel as a valid career opportunity. Are you striving to become a full-time YouTuber or streamer? Well, um, I kind of am a full-time uh, content producer right now in that um, I, don't, I don't have another job. Um, I work for Zam. Uh, at one point, I was juggling working for Zam and Massively and Game Breaker and doing my YouTube channel and my streams all at once and kind of had a, a lot of different revenue sources. But now it's it's just doing Zam with Nexus Talk and doing live streams and YouTube channel. Um, yeah, I would like this to uh, I would like this to be my career. I would like to be able to support my family. 
um, just through doing this kind of content that I, I enjoy. I'm, I'm not quite there yet. It, it's grow. You know, I, I said it in my uh, my channel update vlog a few days ago that you know the channel is growing and it's and it's uh, really good news on all fronts there. The financial aspect of it is is much tougher, um, but yeah, I would like to uh, be able to consistently do this for a living going forward. Um, I don't know if I'm full time in terms of hours yet. I probably put in at least 30, 30 hours a week. Uh, to making content. I do uh, all day when the kids are at school, I'm making content. And most nights, most evenings, I'm actually making videos or writing scripts or, you know, editing videos and rendering stuff. Um, so yeah, I, it's it's pretty close to a full time job as it is right now. And I would like to make this my career going forward long term and avoid having to go back to the corporate um, you know, world if I can help it. I did that for 12 years. And uh, this I'm more passionate about. Okay, Falco's next question is, after the launch of Wildstar, do you have any ideas on what kind of Wildstar-related content you want to focus on? Well, I'm going to continue to be doing the Nexus talk on the Zam Official YouTube channel. That goes live every single Monday, so I'm going to continue to talk about my impressions. I'm going to continue to uh, show off different aspects of the game that I think are interesting, and I'm going to continue to follow the news and talk about what the community is talking about. So that show is going to continue. On my personal channel here... I'll probably do some more live stream. Um, you know, I plan on live streaming a lot when I'm leveling up in the game, especially like during the head start and stuff like that. I'll probably take the funniest bits or the most interesting bits of the leveling and still continue to do highlight videos. Um, I'm also considering doing, um, and these take a lot, a lot of time to do, but um, a map completion guide for some of the zones. That was something I regretted not doing going forward fully on in Guild Wars 2. The problem with the Wildstar map completion is they do have it in the game. There is a way that you can like find all the journals, do all the challenges, and explore the entire map and all that stuff. There, there's an achievement for doing that, but there doesn't. There's no rewards for actually going through all of that. So I'm not sure if the Wildstar community is going to be working on that the same way that the Guild Wars 2 community did. Because in Guild Wars 2, you know, not only did you get these cool chests with items and stuff in it every time you unlock the map, when you did the entire map, the 100% world completion, you got uh, components, the gifts of exploration, which helped you get your legendary weapons. So there was a lot of incentive for folks to do it, so a lot of people were searching for those videos on YouTube. So I might put a couple of those zone guides out, see how they do, um, and, uh, you know, see if that's something that people are gravitating towards and find useful. Um, other than that, I don't know. I'm going to have to wait and see uh, what kind of uh, videos I want to make. If you guys have ideas or stuff that you want me to show, the, the problem is I don't have uh, infinite amounts of time, especially like during launch and stuff like that. So I, I will probably be behind the leveling curve. I'm going to try to to uh, level as quickly as I can, but I'm probably going to be up behind the masses. And so anything like dungeon guides or, you know, higher level like crafting guides or raid boss guides and stuff like that, all that stuff is going to be made and done and put out there before I'm going to have a chance to get there. So I don't know. Um, I, I it's, it's, it's a wait and see on some of the Wildstar content, um, but feel free to suggest things if you that you think there's something that I'm particularly suited to create. And last up from Falco is, what does your wife think of your video making passion? Interesting topic. Um, my wife is not a gamer. She, um, I have tried many, many times over the 12 years that we've been married to uh, get her into gaming. She, I had her play EverQuest with me when that first came out. I had her play World of Warcraft with me. And, uh, yeah, it, it, she just, she plays the games just to kind of, um, pacify me, <laughs> but she doesn't have a lot of enjoyment herself from it. Um, the one game that I've actually gotten her to play, it's a Facebook game and it's Zuma Blitz. And we actually got quite competitive on that at one point. Uh, we were, <laughs> we were competing on that, seeing who's high, who can get the high score for the week. But that's the one game she like really got into. She still plays that from time to time. But um, yeah, what does she think of the video making thing? I, you know what? I think she, she's been very supportive. Um, obviously, she, uh, I would not be able to do this, or would not be trying to build this as a business without her financial support and her <laughs> emotional support uh, during it. Um, 
yeah, she uh, she she watches some of my videos. Uh, she likes reading the comments that people uh, puts on them, and you know, in general, she's happy that I'm happy doing it. So that's that's really all I can ask for. So while she's not a gamer, she does support me pursuing this. She wants me to. Uh, you know, be happy with my job. I was unhappy with my jobs for a long time, and so now it's, uh, you know, now it's the time to kind of try to follow a dream and see if we can get that make this work. And uh, yeah, so she's been awesome. Uh, next up from Inks, who asked, "What is Bog's favorite food and/or meal?" I'm a little bit of a picky eater. I don't like spicy foods. I don't like seafood at all of any type. Um, I tend to like pretty bland things. So, I, But I, I think anytime I'm like celebrating or I'm out to like a nice restaurant or something, I tend to gravitate towards getting like a filet mignon with uh, asparagus on the side or some sort of potato or something like that. So I, I would think that filet mignon is one of my top um, – I also like, you know, I like my mom's homemade lasagna a whole lot. I like Thanksgiving dinner. I like um, chicken dishes a lot. But I would say filet mignon is probably my best meal. Uh, next up from Arflint. How do you juggle work, life, and playtime? And does not having much time ever put you off certain games because you may feel you won't get to discover a player or explore it fully? This is really hard. I was talking about this a week or two ago on Twitter. Um, it's very difficult. I, I find that a lot of the more successful YouTubers and streamers that I watch and follow, they don't seem to have any as many uh, real life commitments as I do. I mean, obviously some of them do. I can't, I'm making a general statement there, but I find that people who can't, the, the problem with the video game um, journalism side, whether it's writing articles or making videos or streaming is everything is time sensitive. And if you, if a game is in, you know, if, if a game is in the hot news right now because it just launched or it's just coming out of beta or something like that, that's when you have to jump on it in order to kind of maximize the attention you get from certain things. And uh, it, it is not, um, the, that doesn't work great when you're trying to upkeep a house and when you have multiple children and when you have, you know, your wife and a menagerie of pets. I mean, all of that is hard to juggle with, oh, I need to be online right now because... You know, they're having a special beta weekend or right now the devs are live streaming this special one hour live stream. I have to, you know, take notes and make a video about it right away. And all of that is is very stressful to, to kind of juggle. And it's why, you know, I can't, you know, it's what, like I was talking about in the first question. Like when Wildstar launches, if I didn't have all those responsibilities as a, a content creator, what I would do is I would just... I would play nonstop until I got to max level and I'd be one of the first people there and then I'd start making guides and content for people that you know people haven't seen yet and you know that kind of thing. So I do think that uh, juggling all that is is a little bit stressful and does limit what I can do, but you know I I wouldn't trade it for anything. I I love you know I love this mess, this chaos that my life is. Um so the uh the answer to your other question um does it limit what kind of games I can play? Um, I don't I don't limit myself from the standpoint of oh that game is a huge time commitment I can't play that because obviously I play MMOs and that's the biggest time sink of any type of game so I play like Hearthstone which is like kind of like limitless can play it forever and you know MMOs they keep going as well so but and I've talked about this a little bit in the past what I'm bad at juggling is like right now I'm following Wildstar Hearthstone and Guild Wars 2 closely which means there's not a lot of room to follow other MMOs. And on top of that, there's a lot of single-player games which look cool and fun and interesting that I don't really give my attention to. And I, I mentioned this before, but I bought Bioshock Infinite a year ago. I've never launched the game. I've never beat Batman Arkham City, even though I've played a bit of it and I love it. I've never beaten The Witcher 2, which I played a bit and I liked. And I've never, you know, and I, I was streaming uh, The Banner Saga a couple months ago. Never finished that game either. So I tend not to finish a lot of single player games. I tend not to even get a lot of single player games that I'm interested in. Um, so I do kind of limit myself. I got to get better at just finding more me time. Because what I do is I say, all right, no one's going to be interested, or, or few people would be interested in me doing like a let's play of Bioshock Infinite. The game's over a year old. And, you know, I, I don't know. The, the people know everything about that game. Now, there's going to be a handful of people that say, oh, I'd like to see Richie play that and see how he reacts to it. And I understand that. But um, so I tend I, my, my gaming time is so limited and I try to gra I, I, I tend to gravitate towards um, playing games where I could be making content at the same time. 
So I'll run guild missions with my Guild Wars 2 group uh, every Monday night, and I'll have the camera rolling, and you know we'll see if anything funny comes out of it, that kind of thing. So it's, it's something I'd like to get better at, better at having more just time to play games for myself, or, uh, you know, but that's a long-winded way to answer your question. Next is up from uh, Dakota, who asks, are there any other 2014 or early 2015 games you're looking forward to making content for? Similar question. Um, I I'm interested in Transistor, which is the game Supergiant is making. I, I mean, they were the people that made Bastion. Um, I don't know a ton about Transistor. It comes out at the end of May of 2014. The I don't know a lot about the game, but the the trailer and that song. If you if you've seen the trailer for Transistor and the song, it kills me. And the art style looks cool, but the song I love. And uh, I'd like to play. I'd like to play that maybe, but it comes at a really bad time. I mean, at the end of May, we're right about the Wildstar launch. I expect Guild Wars 2 to have some cool new content at some point. Hearthstone's going to be doing their next Ramus stuff in the near future, or maybe over the summer. So I'm not sure I'm going to get into Transistor or not. The other one I'm le- I'm looking forward to is the next Dragon Age game, Dragon Age Inquisition, which comes out in the fall. Um, I, I play Dragon Age 1 and 2. I love those games, and uh, I, might, I might stream or you know do a Let's Play of that game. Um, on the MMO front, I'm interested in EverQuest next. Not landmark, not the sandboxy build buildy stuff. That's not really kind of my thing, but once EverQuest next becomes a proper MMO with content and actual combat and, and things like that, uh, I'm definitely interested in taking a look at that as well. That looks interesting. I just need my microphone. I need it, like, not want it or desire it, but I kicked it with my knee. Um, That's totally different. Next up from Talafalana who asks, what are some of the Hearthstone resources that you use? Okay, if you check out my basic training Hearthstone video on arenas, which I think is the most recent one, I put it out a week or two ago, in the description I put links to a lot of the um, guides that I use for when I'm crafting an arena deck. Um, but I, I check out, you know, I check out the Hearthstone Reddit page a lot, and I follow links in there. Um, I watch uh, Trump's uh, streams on Twitch. I think it's Trump SC, twitch.tv slash Trump SC. Um, and there's a couple other websites. I could just bring that up now. Hearthhead, right? That's a Zam site. That's a good uh, site. You can find a lot of decks on there. I actually list all the decks that I've made for my various videos on there as well. And uh, so you can go over there, iHearthU.com. It's the you know the letter I and then Hearth and then U, the letter U.com. That's another one that's got some uh, really good articles on it. TeamLiquid.net actually has articles on it as well. So these are some of the professional sites out there that I've used. But you know, really, it, it's mostly looking at the uh, Hearthstone Reddit uh, subreddit every day and just kind of. You know, seeing what's interesting or new. There's some funny stuff, but there's also, um, you know, some good links to articles and videos and stuff like that. And uh, there's actually one for, there's another Hearthstone subreddit called Hearthstone VODs, V-O-D-S, for videos on demand. And this is a way you can watch the professional tournaments in a non-spoiler uh, format. So I watch I watch a, uh, quite a bit of that. I don't know why I'm getting into, like, watching Hearthstone esports. But uh, it's really interesting to me to kind of uh, watch all that unfold. So those are the main Hearthstone resources I've, uh, I've uh I use. And last up is another Hearthstone uh, question from Cam who asks, In Hearthstone, we discussed on Twitter... Uh, the nerf to Unleash the Hounds. So if you didn't know that, the, uh, they, they're going to nerf Unleash the Hounds to cost 3 mana instead of 2 mana because there was a lot of uh, aggro hunter decks that were just using that card constantly and it was just a little too easy to get a huge swing in the game. So they upped the mana cost by 1. I mentioned uh, Savannah High Main Lion decks as a counter to Warlock Rushes, but my experience though, it's over by round 6 before you can play that card. Can you expand upon this topic and are other are there other balance adjustments you'd like to see in Hearthstone or do you think it's pretty much balanced? I mentioned the Savannah High Maid. There there is another I don't know what it's called. I haven't really researched it yet, but there is another hunter type deck that I've been seeing on the ladder besides just the aggro I'm going to bite your face off uh, one. And it's one that that utilizes the Savannah High Maid, but that's that I mentioned that card to kind of try to identify the type of deck it is, but that's not necessarily the card that beats the warlock aggro. 
Um, it's it's more of a control hunter. It's got taunts in it, and that's really the key to beating the Warlock Aggro, is having lots and lots of taunts. Um, so uh, I, I do think that there are hunter decks out there that are more control-oriented that can work well against like the Warlock Zoo-type decks. Uh, but in general, if you don't if you don't have to play Hunter, um, any any heavy heavy control deck can can beat those druids. I, I put out my video on the Zookeeper as I called it, which was specifically made. It's a druid deck that's specifically made to take on those aggro warlock decks, and I have a pretty good win percentage against those type of decks with it. So load yourself up with taunts. That's the current meta game right now. I think it's shifting a bit. I'm not finding as much aggro on the ladder. As I was a couple weeks ago, I think it is shifting more towards these big beefy control decks with really big creatures and taunts. Um, so again, it's gonna you know I love that about Hearthstone is there is there's this pendulum that swings back and forth and the meta constantly shifts as people say oh I'm facing all these hunter aggro decks and all these warlock aggro decks well I'm gonna make these control decks and then that's gonna become the new norm and then it shifts again to you know you're always trying to counter the meta stay a couple steps ahead of the meta so play around with uh, hunter control if you really want to play. Hunter. I don't think the Unleash the Hounds uh, nerf is too bad. It's only one more mana, but of course, you know, I'd have to play it to really see what kind of impact that has on it. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap things up for uh, things you ought to know. If uh, you like this video, please hit that like button. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. I would imagine that most people watching a Q&A video are already subscribed, so thank you very much for doing so. And you can hit me up on Twitter, at Richie Procopio. Go over to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash bogotter, and become one of my otters on Patreon. And if you uh, contribute... You know, just a dollar a month, you get uh, access to our patron-only feed, and there are other rewards from there, including being able to ask me questions to talk about on things you ought to know. I hope everybody has a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Goodbye. Good day. <laughs> <laughs>